So question is, what are the personal income tax rates? Uh, generally speaking, I guess obviously the, the tiers, but I, I guess we're looking for opportunities, planning opportunities when it comes to receiving income from outside. So personal income tax, Ravi, what are the, the ranges and what opportunities there are there? Personal income tax at the moment, the minimum uh, mm -hmm. is of course starts from 1% for the first, after the first 5,000. Okay, mm -hmm. technically, then the maximum is 30% mm -hmm. on the above 2 million. So it is quite high, you can say. Mm -hmm. that, that is for tax resident, it's based on scale rate. Tax resident, mm -hmm. you have, you need to be 182 days in Malaysia to qualify. Mm -hmm. Then uh, that, that's the minimum requirement. Then there are a few X that you can check also whether you're qualified or not, because you can see two, three years or so, there's a calculation to be seen. But in basic, you must be 182 days in Malaysia to qualify. Mm -hmm. If you're a non-resident, then you will be taxed at 30% uh, flat rate without any relief, no tax mm -hmm. relief. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 1 to 30% for Malaysian tax resident. Now, we spoke about dividends, so we don't need to talk about that. What about other remittances? So if somebody has royalties, uh, interest, income, would all that be taxable as well? Unless yeah. it was taxed somewhere else? Uh, no, because we have a, mm -hmm. under the DT also, you have this, we also right. have, we call it special classes of income. Mm -hmm. Okay, that goes under withholding tax. Interest mm -hmm. at the moment is 15% withholding tax. Mm -hmm. Like Singapore and Malaysia, they have a DTA. Of, we uh, mm -hmm. Singapore Malaysia is 10%. Okay, so they give a reduced rate. Right. Okay, then you, but, you have that. Right. Mm -hmm. But if, if it is that the income is being remitted or received from a jurisdiction without a DTA with Malaysia, then, then it'll go 15%. Then it'll be 15% across the board. 15%. You follow that. You fall back to the Malaysian Income Tax Act. If the DTA giving a lower rate means you fall back to the mm -hmm. DTA. Okay, understood. Okay. Okay. Then you have technical fees. Technical fees yeah. is uh, normally is 10%. Mm -hmm. Okay, then uh, you have uh, royalties. Royalties also you have 10%. Mm -hmm. Then you have, uh, 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 what do you say, so, uh, contractors, mm -hmm. uh, consultant and contractor. Uh, that means you, you are in Malaysia more than six months. You're doing some projects or what, then that would be on 10 plus 3. 10, mm -hmm. 10 plus 3 means 10 uh, for the company another mm -hmm. three for the employees that you are mm -hmm. uh, uh, that you are bringing outside malaysia uh, to work here because mm -hmm. uh, this this money normally they have 10 plus 3 because they, they assume this company will have need to do a tax return at end of the project because their their presence p presence is more than six months mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so when they do the return if there is any uh, making a loss or anything they can get the refund if they are mm -hmm. making more profit then they have to pay a higher tax based on the corporate rate 24 percent gotcha yeah yeah okay 24%. okay booty up individual taxes okay uh, so uh are you saying referring tax or personal tax? personal tax individual oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. right so personal tax uh in singapore it, it, uh, i think it's quite a big spread so you're talking about the lowest at two percent uh up to the highest of 24 percent so mm -hmm. it really uh tax the the rich one so mm -hmm. if you are earning like uh, uh, 240,000 a year, you could be end up paying close to 20%. So it's quite high. So 20% mm -hmm. is quite high. Okay, normal uh, mid income, we, we went up like uh, uh, between uh, 6 to 12%, something like that. Mm -hmm. So most of us will, will hit that bracket, right? So, um, uh, but unfortunately, um, mm -hmm. Singapore government gives a lot, support a lot, SME, mm. uh, I mean yeah. corporate tax in terms of corporate, uh, mm -hmm. but very little to the, the personnel. So there mm -hmm. isn't a lot of incentives for personnel. So mm -hmm. whatever you earn, uh, most of them get tax. Yeah. Okay. And what about income arising outside? We spoke about dividends already, but what about someone getting interest, royalties, some sort yeah. of passive income, maybe rental income from outside? So uh, interest is not taxable. So like what uh, Ravi say, so if you receive royalty, everything else, you'll probably get tax outside, right? Okay. So, but not by Singapore. Yeah, you are not in a, you are not a trade, so you, you mm. probably suffer tax and you will not be considered. Okay, whereas Malaysia is going to tax you on that passive income that you receive from outside, okay? Yeah. Understood. And, and Ravi, does it apply to rental income? So like if I'm living in Kiel and I have lots of rental properties in Hong Kong and Singapore, and that the rent comes into me, in, in KL, am I going to be taxed on that as well? 
No, because income tax fall on the uh, you are talking about individuals, huh? not uh, individuals. Yeah, individuals. individuals correct. Okay, yeah. individuals. Because you see, uh, income tax uh, normally you have to fall under the section four of the income tax. Section four, you have A, A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, mm -hmm. you must fall. Rental is one of it, but the rental it says that it must be territorial basis. I told you the rental right. must be from yeah. Malaysia. Okay, yeah, yeah, overseas yeah. income remitted back to Malaysia is taxable, as I told you. But mm -hmm. you want to tax the overseas Malaysia remitted back to tax, the income must fall. Still must fall under the four A. Must be within right. the four A. So right, right. we have one under uh, withholding tax for say income of movable properties. Okay, mm. maybe you rent a ship means yes. Mm -hmm. That means th there will be taxable withholding tax on it. Mm -hmm. You are receiving it. You have to receive withholding tax when you make the payment. But uh, mm. for these uh, properties, uh, mm -hmm. there's no tax technically mm -hmm. for overseas. That means you, you remit the money, it won't fall mm -hmm. under the section 4A. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So that's good. But other classes of income. Because technically, you have well. separate yeah. tax also in overseas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But the others that we discussed, so royalties, interests, that'll all be still taxable, even though it's coming from overseas. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, in uh, Singapore, if you have overseas income uh, mm -hmm. uh, that is suffered tax, uh, in, let's say Australia, uh, when you receive it in Singapore, you, you don't even need to declare. So, mm -hmm. that's the thing. So, uh, it's quite clear. So, whatever mm -hmm. taxable, uh, they are like uh, rental, yes, it's taxable. Trades, uh, property, investment, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Okay, stock options, so the, the other one that is uh, taxable. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So, if you're a six, seven, or eight figure investor, entrepreneur, or business owner who needs a tailor made solution from a qualified team of professionals, we can help you achieve the international lifestyle, the freedom, and even the tax savings you're looking for. Visit us at htj.tax and live that international life.